Uh, Lowe's Corp CEO Jim Tisch is the deal maker whom you might say won't make a deal. He is not ready to throw caution to the wind in this shaky economy. Instead, he's exercising the kind of patience that has made Lowe's such a long-term success, better even by some measures than Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. He is profiled in the new issue of Bloomberg Markets and here to talk to us about Lowe's and the U.S. economy, Jim Tisch. Jim, good to see you this morning and thank you for joining us. Good to be here. So lots of questions we have for you, but let's start with the question of value because you are a value investor. If you look at the performance, if you look at what you've done, what you've done with your brother, what you've done with your family, your father did over the years, it's deliver value to your shareholders in Lowe's Corp. There are lots of people who say, strategists in particular, there's value to be had in the stock market today. That valuations are perhaps at historic lows by some measures, that it's a once in a generation opportunity according to Goldman Sachs. But you're sitting on your money. You're not putting it to work. How come? First of all, we don't feel a need to do deals. We're our goal, and it's been our goal for the past 50 years, has been to create value over the long term. We don't feel the pressure to do a deal. We only want to do something when we are as certain as we can be that it will be value creating for all of our shareholders. And to date, we just haven't seen that yet. Is that, is that to say that prices, and I'm talking in general terms about valuations for public equities, valuations for private companies, aren't low enough to tempt you? Value, valuations are fine. You know, uh, stocks, I, I think stocks are at reasonable value here. They're not dirt cheap and they're not outrageously expensive like they were in 99 and 2000. But we, in, in order to do a deal, we've got to find the right business at the right price. We are constantly looking, but to date we haven't found it. But just because we haven't found a deal to do for Lowe's doesn't mean that our subsidiaries haven't been busy. They've, they've invested billions of, billion, of billions of dollars in assets in their particular businesses. Uh, our insurance company just announced uh, a few weeks ago that it was buying a Lloyd syndicate in London. Our offshore drilling company has bought over the past four or five years uh, five brand new drilling rigs for about $650 million a piece, uh, has announced the upgrade of one for $300 million. Our pipeline business has been uh, buying storage So, so they're assets. not sitting I, still. <laughs> they, are, they are very, very busy, yes. Well, you're known for your investments in the energy sector. Where do you see natural gas prices going over the next 18 months? Natural gas prices are going higher. But that's not saying much. Natural gas prices at about $2 in MCF is the equivalent of oil trading at $12 a barrel. It's just too cheap. My, my prognostication is that in the next two to three years, natural gas will go to about $4.50 in MCF, which is about $27 a barrel. So a BTU of gas will be one quarter of the price of a BTU of oil. It's just too cheap and as a result I see an enormous increase in our economy in natural gas. And I see, I see us converting actually to a natural gas driven economy. Do you believe, Jim, that natural, some people have been saying this recently, they're beginning to think of natural gas in sort of macroeconomic terms, that natural gas, the, the abundance of natural gas, all these discoveries that have been made through techniques like fracking or at least extraction through fracking, uh, is going to be an economic driver of historic proportions for the U.S. economy. It, it will be transformative. I think that in the, in the past few years you've seen a dramatic switch to, of electrical generation to natural gas away from coal. The next major switch is going to be trans, uh, gas as a transportation fuel, uh, both starting with trucks, trains, and autom automobiles coming last. But it will happen because it's just too cheap. I want to stay on the U.S. economy. As an American businessman, what are you most concerned with? I'm, I'm concerned with the sluggish growth that we have in the economy. I mean, that, that, is, that is the major problem. What do you attribute it to? I attribute a lot of it to rancor in Washington. Uh, I attribute it to, to the fact that uh, business is constantly being uh, demonized in Washington. 
Uh, and and um, it's the banks. At a time, it was the banks that were demonized. But it makes every other businessman look up and say, wait a second, maybe our business could be next. And so, so it, is, it is really a, creates an environment where there isn't optimism, there isn't enthusiasm about investing. And as a result, exe chief executives sit on their hands instead of actually go out and invest. If Mitt Romney's our next president, will that change? You know, I don't, I don't want to talk about one president versus another. Uh, would, you, would, you, would you fire the whole Congress and start afresh? <laughs> we can't do that either. You know, <laughs> it, it, would, it would be nice if we could, but alas, we can't. Uh, and and I, I truly do believe in the wisdom of the American electorate. So I think the American electorate will get it right. Stephanie, uh, Jim, quick question for you, Jim, about jobs. Everybody pays attention to this number. Does it mean anything to you? Is it possible that CEOs around the country are emboldened, encouraged by a healthy jobs report and actually changes the way they think about things? One month certainly doesn't. And there's a lot of volatility in every month's number. And so what, what a chief executive is looking at is really the long-term trends. And right now, the long-term trend is 120 thousand jobs or so which is a lot better than where we were two three years ago but it's still not up to the uh, 200 to 300 thousand that the economy really needs for it to be growing the reason that the jobs number gets so much attention is because it is really the, the first and uh, nearest number that gives an assessment of how the economy is doing well you've said that the economy is pretty sluggish that's your outlook here Hotel is a very big business for you. You have a new CEO for Lowe's Hotels. What's your outlook on the tourism space? It, hotel business is doing better. It's still not back to the levels that it was in 07, which is how I, how I define whether we've got a full recovery in place. But you're right. Uh, RevPAR has improved. Occupancy is strong. Uh, the thing that we've been lucky about is that there hasn't been a lot of construction of new rooms but my guess is in the next year or so we're going to start to see that and so the business will become more competitive. You want to expand that business at all? We'd love to yes yes we're looking to expand it in uh, a, a, what I call an asset light manner where rather than buying the whole hotel we buy a slice of the hotel and we uh, have other investors along with us for the ride. Jim are banks doing enough to support the economic recovery right now? I think so um, if, if I were a bank president, I, I would feel like I was in the boxing ring and everybody was, was punching at me. Uh, you have people who say they're over levered. You have people who say they have to uh, lend more. more money. Uh, you have people who are criticizing their balance sheets, not letting them uh, spend their capital the way they want to do it, uh, the way they feel is best for their shareholders. I'd be, I'd be really, really frustrated if I were a banker now. But frustrated, fine. But should we trust them? I mean, the questions that arise are, that's how they feel. But many of these folks, uh, men for the most part, are the same people who ran these institutions before we headed into the crisis. So they, they say that that's what's good for the economy now. But on the basis of performance, do they know? You know, a, a, lot, of them, a lot of them were managed very well. And some of them, you're right, did screw up. But remember one thing, in the context of history, what happened is that in, in 07, 08, the world changed on a dime. Nobody, 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 except maybe one or two people that nobody listened to, was calling for housing prices to decline by 20 or 30 percent. Nobody thought it was possible. Look at Fannie and Freddie and, and what happened to them as a result. So just to say that it was mismanagement of the banks, I think, I think goes a little too far. Understates the situation. Jim, great to see you and thank you very Good much for coming. Here. We'd love to have you back soon. Thank you. The chief executive officer of the Lowe's Corporation, Jim Tish.